All right, this is Mr. Anderson for Kellogg Community College, and we are going to be looking uh, at some right triangle trigonometry, the start of chapter four in our trigonometry books, Math 122. Well, the first thing I want to do is actually um, give you a little quiz. There are eight questions here, um, and I would like you to take this quiz uh, by yourself. Um, you can read these questions, uh, freeze frame the video, and then unpause it when you've answered them yourself and if you don't know the answer to that that's great we're gonna be talking about that but just to basically check your right triangle IQ so uh, pause the video now and then unpause when finished okay hopefully you uh, did that little self test and I'm gonna go through each of these answers here and let you know how you did okay problem number one in a right triangle, if one length of the hypotenuse is 5 and the other side is 3, um, what is the length of the third side? Well, the answer is 4. Um, and this is because of uh, the 3, 4, 5 triangle is a Pythagorean triple, um, or 3 squared plus uh, 4 squared. This triangle is not drawn to scale. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, or 9 plus 16 equals 25. So we'll be doing Pythagorean theorem uh, today. Um, okay, problem number two. If theta is an acute angle, solve for the equation tangent of theta is equal to one-third. Use your calculator to express your answer in degrees rounded to one decimal space. Now, the first thing that you may or may not have done is you may not have put your calculator in degree mode. What's important about that is your calculator is actually not set up in degree mode. It's set up in radian mode. So you need to go to your calculator and click on the mode key and change it into degrees and hit enter. Um, because this is technically um, one third degree, not a third radian. Now, what did you type in? Well, you should have typed in the inverse tangent of one third. Now, if you type that in, the inverse tangent finds the measurement at theta right there. Because um, from the previous section, we talked about what inverse functions mean. So to find the angle theta, we would take the inverse tangent of one-third, and your decimal equivalent would be 18.4 degrees. All right, now this is a general knowledge question that many of you might have just left blank, but the answer to this problem um, is going to be 38 degrees. And the reason why it's 38 degrees is because the sine of 52 and the cosine of 38 are complements to 90 degrees. This can be explained in many ways, but the one way I like to explain it is let's hypothesize that we have a triangle, <laughs> we have a right triangle with um, one angle being uh, 52 degrees. Now, the sine of that angle is going to be the opposite over hypotenuse. So let's just put our opposite side as uh, letter A and opposite and the uh, hypotenuse side as letter H. So the sine of 52 degrees would then be our hypothetical A over H. Now because tri triangles add up to 180, or sorry, uh, 180 degrees here, um, since they add up to 180, then this angle would have to be 38 degrees. And 38 degrees um, is um, 38 plus 52 plus 90 is 180 degrees. Sorry, that doesn't look like an 8. There we go, it's a little better. Now, from that perspective, the cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So it would be the same fraction ratio. So the sine of 52 degrees would be written as A over H, and therefore the cosine of 38 degrees is A over H. And we're going to we're going to actually play with this a little bit more with their angles and um, some of their um, complements on the right triangle. Okay, so now in a right triangle, the right angle is 90 degrees, and the sum of the two other angles is also 90 degrees. And we explained a little bit of that earlier, knowing that all triangles add up to 180 degrees. Okay, the true or false section here. True or false. In a right triangle, if two sides are known, then we can solve for the triangle, all sides and all angles. That's absolutely true. 
We're going to be learning how to find that now from to find the missing third side when we're given two sides, we can use Pythagorean theorem. And then we will use inverse functions to find the angle measurements inside of the right triangles. True or false? In a right triangle, if we know the two acute angles, we can solve the triangle. That's false. And the reason why that's false is by knowing the angles, you don't actually fix in the size of the sides. For example, I have a triangle here and a triangle here. And if I just give you the two angle measurements, maybe these acute angles here, you can see that I would come up with three different sizes um, based on just the same two angles. So two angles is not significant to lock down all three sizes of the sides. But knowing the two angles will let us find the third angle, but we need more than two angles to find every other part of a triangle. Now, the Pythagorean theorem works for any triangle. That's false. The Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangles. In fact, the Pythagorean theorem is an if and only if condition because a Pythagorean theorem will work on a triangle if and only if it's a right triangle. And therefore, if it's a right triangle, then the Pythagorean theorem needs to work on it. So the Pythagorean theorem is a test is check is one test to check to see if a triangle is a right triangle. And finally, a triangle can have two legs with length one and a hypotenuse of two. This is false. And it's false because I think most of us, when we look at triangles, our brain wants to logically say, oh sure, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. But if you put, this, this is an impossible picture to draw because this span could not possibly be 2 because um, if I put 1 and 1 side by side on the floor, that would be equal to 2. So to make a triangle that had a span of 2 across its hypotenuse, it would have to actually be a straight line on the ground. It couldn't actually be a... Um, a hypotenuse of, of two like that. So, no, I'm sorry, that is not going to work. And that's how most people think of a triangle, but no, you can't have a triangle like that with one and one. All right. In fact, um, if this number was any bigger than two, if it was like 2.01, you'd have an extremely obtuse triangle, but at least um, it would be a triangle, but not a right triangle. For the following problems below, and there's a bunch of them here, for the following problems below, what we're going to do is find the exact value of these trigonometric functions. Now, each of these problems is going to take a setup where we're going to have to find the missing side using Pythagorean theorem, and then we can find the six trigonometric functions based on angle theta. Now, it's from that perspective. So you'll notice that theta moves, and that is going to change the six trigonometric functions based on that perspective. Now, it's important to understand and know SOHCAHTOA. SOHCAHTOA is the um, relationship between sine, cosine, and tangent, and its perspectives. Moreover, SOHCAHTOA is useful in doing the three in, um, reciprocal functions, which is secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Well, let's dig in and find our missing side, the hypotenuse. So what we have here is we have our x squared, we have our y squared, but we're missing our hypotenuse squared, or it, most of the time, um, Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So here it is. So this is 144 plus 25 is equal to h squared. 169 is equal to h squared. Take the square root of both sides, and we're going to um, ignore the negative value of this. So my hypotenuse is going to be 13. So the hypotenuse is 13 in this picture. So now we're going to find our six trigonometric values. I'm going to start off with sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, from the perspective of theta, the sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So that's 5 thirteenths. The cosine of theta from that perspective is 12 thirteenths. And the tangent from that perspective is um, opposite over adjacent, so that's um, 5 over 12. So sine, opposite over hypotenuse, cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent, opposite over adjacent, or SOHCAHTOA, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, SOHCAHTOA. Now, 
the reciprocal functions, um, I'm going to put them next to it. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. And that would be the reciprocal of this, 13 over 5, or um, hypotenuse over opposite. The sine of, or not sine, excuse me, the secant of theta is going to be the reciprocal function of cosine, so that's 13 twelfths. And the cotangent of theta is the reciprocal function of tangent, so it's, ah, uh, shoot, <laughs> it's 12 fifths. All right. And we'll do this for the remaining nine problems. So here we go, problem number 10. Problems get a little bit trickier when we uh, get into stranger values of um, the missing pieces. So here we have our missing side. We're, we're going to find our h right there. So take our legs, 3 squared plus 4 squared, and set that equal to the hypotenuse squared. This is 9 plus 25 equals, um, or sorry, the 9 plus 16 equals hypotenuse squared. So 25 is equal to hypotenuse squared. Take the square root of both sides, ignoring the um, extraneous uh, negative, and the hypotenuse is equal to 5. This is a classic 3, 4, 5 triangle. In fact, these two triangles here are, are ones you're going to see quite a bit uh, in the book and on tests and on quizzes. So just be prepared to see those or multiples of these. For example, a multiple of the 3, 4, 5 is the 6, 8, 10. So now we're going to find our sine of theta. Our sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so we're going to take 3 fifths. And here I, I might as well just do the reciprocal function, which is 5 thirds. The cosine is going to be the adjacent over hypotenuse, or 4 fifths. Um, and I might as well, as I said, do the reciprocal function here, which is going to be the secant of 5 fourths. And the tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, so 3 fourths, which I might as well do the reciprocal here for cotangent, our last one to do, four thirds. Okay, so on to problem number 11. In problem number 11 here, we're going to find our hypotenuse again. Uh, in this case, we're not going to have such an easy answer because two, two squared plus three squared equaling hypotenuse squared. This is four plus nine equals the hypotenuse squared. 13 equals hypotenuse squared. Take the square root of both sides. Hypotenuse is equal to the square root of 13. No, we are not going to turn this into a decimal. We're not going to approximate. We are going to use the exact value. So the hypotenuse is square root of 13. So with this in mind, what we need to do now is we need to find our sine, cosine, tangent, and the reciprocal functions. From theta, now look at the perspective of theta. Theta is now at the top of the triangle, so opposite would be 2. And the hypotenuse would be square root of 13. Now, at this moment, it might benefit me to go to my co, uh, secant, theta, and write my reciprocal function. But I wouldn't want to leave my answer like this because we, you know, can't have a square root in the denominator. So we're going to multiply by 1 which is square root of 13 over square root of 13. So 2 square root of 13 over the square root of 169, which makes 13. Cosine. From that perspective, we're going to go adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is 3 over square root of 13. And again, at this moment, you may want to go over here and write out its in reciprocal function right there, which is the secant of theta, square root of 13 over 3. But again, can't leave it this way, so we multiply top and bottom by square root of 13 over square root of 13. So what we have here is 3 square root of 13 divided by 13. Tangent, the easiest one on the mark here because we're going to go opposite over adjacent, 3 halves. And then the cotangent is the adjacent over opposite, or the reciprocal of tangent, 2 thirds. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the next problem here, problem number 12. Okay, problem number 12, what we have here is we have our 3 and 3, and we are missing the hypotenuse. So this would be 3 squared plus 3 squared um, is equal to the hypotenuse squared, again, missing h. 
So this is going to be 9 plus 9 is equal to hypotenuse squared, which is going to be 18 equals hypotenuse squared. Take the square root of both sides, ignoring the negative. This is the square root of 18. You can't leave it this way, because the square root of 18 can be simplified to the square root of 9 times square root of 2, which means that our hypotenuse is in reduced form 3 square root of 2. And yes, you have to simplify your radicals. So this is 3 square root of 2. Methinks this um, isosceles triangle is a 45, 45, 90. All right, so now that we know that, let's uh, start rocking out our sine of theta. So we're going to look at that perspective right there. Okay, so our sine of theta right there, we're going to take a look at um, sine is, from that perspective, it's opposite over hypotenuse which is going to be 3 square root of 2. Okay, so what we have here is our opposite over hypotenuse, 3 square root of 2. Um, we can do some simplification here. The 3's do divide out, so this makes 1 over square root of 2, um, which is important because at this moment I will probably, to be, correct, to be kind of smart about this, probably want to write my cosecant re uh, reciprocal of this problem, so square root of 2 would be my answer. Now, for us, we're going to continue working on this here. We're going to multiply top and bottom by square root of 2 over square root of 2. It's multiplying by 1 to get rid of the square root in the denominator. And then what we have here is square root of 2 over, whoops, didn't mean to write the check mark there, or the radical, square root of 2 over 2. Now, wait a second here. Since I've studied the unit circle, I this should ring a bell. Square root of 2 over 2 for sine? Hmm. I bet this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which is what I mentioned earlier because you have two sides that are equal, and because of the hinge theorem, um, the width of the angle is proportional and actually matches the side on the other side, so theta is going to be the same over here. So cosine theta is going to be a big fat copy because cosine from here is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 3 over 3 square root of 2. Uh, again, this eventually will trail off to square root of 2 over 2, and so my secant is going to be just square root of 2. All right, now we're going to rock out tangent. Tangent, uh, this is pretty easy, right? Remember the tangent at 45 degrees? 3 over 3 in this case, opposite over adjacent, which goes down to 1. That means my cotangent is the reciprocal of 1, which is 1. Okay, well... Let's keep working on here for problem number 13. Now you're going to be assigned some of these um, for your homework. You're going to be doing the odds. But you know what? Might as well while they're here. You know, you might as well, I might as well go over those. So here I've got 4 squared and 2 squared. But in this case, I know my hypotenuse and I know one of my legs. I'll just call this leg A. So now I have to figure out leg B. So I'm going to take my um, equation, which is going to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and this is going to be 2 squared plus b squared equals 4 squared. So that means it's going to be 4 plus b squared equals 16. Subtract the 4 from both sides. b squared is equal to 12. Take the square root. b is equal to the square root of 12. And we can't keep our answer like that. And the reason why is because that is fully not uh, reduced. So this is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So b is equal to 2 square roots of 3. So we have a side of 4, a side of 2, and a side of 2 square roots of 3. This is going to be another familiar triangle, but it's not as evident as the last one was. Where this one was a 45, 45, 90, this one has also some special properties to it. So here we go with solving for sine of theta. Sine of theta is opposite 2 square roots of 3 over hypotenuse 4, which I can then simplify because 2 fourths simplifies to square root of 3 over 2. Wait a second, that looks familiar, doesn't it? Well, let's do our cosecant. Let's say it doesn't look familiar to you. Let's do our cosecant of theta. So we're going to do our reciprocal there, which is 2 over square roots of 3. Multiply top and bottom by square root of 3 over square root of 3 like so. And so what I get is 2 square roots of 3 over 3. Hey! I've had this on the on the unit circle. Um, in fact, I'm going to kind of let you know here that this, my friends, is a 30-60-90 triangle. This angle theta right there represents a 60-degree angle, 
and then this smaller angle right here, this smaller angle is 30 degrees. So you're going to see some uh, relationships here that you've seen on the unit circle. Let's look up cosine now. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which we can reduce to one half. And that means that the reciprocal of cosine is secant. And that's going to be two. Tangent, theta. That is going to be the um, opposite over adjacent. So square roots of three. And therefore, my cotangent of theta is going to be, well, 1 over square roots of 3. Well, shucks, let's just multiply top and bottom by square root of 3 over 3 to get the de rationalize the denominator. Square root of 3 over 3 is my cotangent. And yes, we have seen this on the unit circle for 30 degrees and 60 degrees. So problem numbers 12 and 13, well, that pretty much brings back our 45, 30, 45, and 60 degree angles in the first quadrant on the unit circle. All right, let's talk about problem number 14. Problem number 14. We know the hypotenuse. We know the leg. Now, generally speaking, this is the Pythagorean theorem. But this is really useful when we're trying to find the hypotenuse. But in the case of not finding the hypotenuse, we can modify this uh, problem a little bit by subtracting b squared from both sides, like so. So a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared. And what I've done in the past is I've told students that, hey, if you're trying to find the hypotenuse, go a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But if you're trying to find the leg, c squared minus b squared equals a squared. Um, it's not a technical reverse, but it is kind of like changing the problem's order, and it'll make things kind of easy. So let's use this equation right here when trying to find a leg. 4 squared minus 3 squared equals um, a squared. And again, I'm just um, I'm just trying to simplify things here, and it'll make things just maybe a little bit faster. 4 squared is 16 minus 3 squared, which is 9, is equal to a squared. And therefore, 16 minus 9, well, that is going to be 7 is equal to a squared. So a is equal to the square root of 7. So there it is, square root of 7. Well, let's go and Punch this out here for sine, cosine, and tangent from the perspective of theta. Well, sine is easy because it's 3 fourths, opposite over hypotenuse, and therefore the cosecant is going to be 4 thirds. That's the easy one. The rest of the ones, nah, not so much. Let's go with uh, cosine. Cosine theta is square root of 7 over 4. That means our secant is going of that theta from that perspective is going to be 4 over square root of 7, which I can't leave like that, so I multiply by a giant 1, which is square root of 7 over square root of 7. So 4 square roots of 7, oh, I look like a 4 there, 4 square roots of 7 over 7. All right, let's go do an tangent then. Tangent from theta from that perspective is going to be 3 over square root of 7. Now at this moment, I may want to go over here and do my cotangent theta, which is going to be square root of 7 over 3. You get better by doing these, figuring out when you should go for your reciprocal, because you'll note that I chose it at a time when I wouldn't have to do any work to this at the end. But I do have to work, do work here, so, you know, square root of 7, top and bottom. So my answer is 3 square root of 7 over 7. Now, the reason why I skipped to the cotangent quickly, quickly is that I have some people, you know, trying to do the reciprocal of that. You've got to go through a lot of work to get that to its neighboring reciprocal, so... I can just kind of jump the gun a little bit. Okay, well, we're going to see now problem number 15. Okay, problem number 15. Um, we are trying to find our hypotenuse, so we will use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in this case, 1 squared plus the square root of 2 squared is equal to c squared. So that's 1 plus 2. Yep, 1 squared is 1. The square root of 2 squared is 2 is equal to c squared. So 3 is equal to c squared, which means that c, or the hypotenuse, is the square root of 3. So let's put that here, square root of 3. All right, so let's do our sine cosine tangent. The sine is going of theta from that perspective is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. 
So in this case, the opposite is square root of 2. The hypotenuse is square root of 3. No, we can't leave it that way. We are going to rationalize the denominator. And we get multiplying top and bottom by square root of 3 over square root of 3. What we get here is square root of 6 over 3. Now, the question when we get to cosecant is where should I, should I flip this over now? And I could flip it over now if I wanted to, but I could actually choose an easier place to flip, and I'll choose uh, this spot here. So square root of 3 over 2. And then I just rationalize this denominator, which is the square root of 2 over square root of 2. Um, you could do the entire problem by flipping this, but you would have to do an extra uh, simplification step. Square root of 6 over 4 is the answer to the problem. Okay, let's do cosine. From that perspective, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. 1 over square root of 3. And immediately I'm going to do my secant of theta, which is square root of 3 over 1. Now I'm going to multiply top and bottom by square root of 3 over 3 to get rid of the denominator, denominator's radical. Tangent time. Tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. Well, that's square root of 2 over 1. But the cotangent of theta is going to be 1 over square root of 2, which we will then compute by multiplying top and bottom by square root of 2 over square root of 2, which is square root of 2 over 2. All right. So everything's looking good here. Well, let's see here. Going to move on to problem number 16. You've been sticking with me through this. I appreciate it. Of course, you know, you might have jumped around to the problems that you needed to do, and that would be okay as well. All right, so we know this is square root of 3. We know this is 2, but we don't know our hypotenuse, h. So we're going to go a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in this case, we're going to have the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared equals c squared. So 3 plus 4 equals, oh shoot, 3 plus 4 equals c squared, or 7 equals c squared. So in this case, my answer for problem number 16, like problem number 14, the hypotenuse is, or at least one of the sides, not necessarily the hypotenuse, but one of the sides is square root of 7. So let's rock out from the perspective of our theta, our sine of theta. Sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so 2 over square root of 7. Immediately I'm going to do cosecant, which is going to be square root of 7, ah, square root of 7 over 2. Cosine theta. Cosine theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so square root of 3 over square root of 7, which I'm immediately going to go and write my secant down as square root of 7 over square root of 3, and multiply top and bottom here square root of 7, square root of 7. So this is going to be square root of 21 over 7. And this I'm going to multiply by square root of 3, square root of 3. This will be square root of 21 over 3. All right, and now down to tangent. The tangent of this problem from theta's perspective is going to be 2 over square root of 3, which I will immediately do the cotangent because that then will be square root of 3 over 2. And from the tangent perspective, we need to get rid of that square root of 3 in the denominator. So I got 2 square root of 3 over 3. All right. Getting the home base here. Here we go. Problem 17. Problem 17. Okay. So we don't know this side letter A. So let's use the formula c squared minus b squared equals a squared. So this means we're going to have the square root of 5 quantity squared minus 1 quantity squared equals a squared. Now again, if you skipped ahead, this is just the Pythagorean, th written, Pythagorean theorem written from the perspective of knowing one of the two sides and the hypotenuse. This is 5 minus 1 equals a squared or 4 equals a squared, well, shucky darn, this means that a is equal to 2 when we take the square root of both sides. So that's actually really good for us because now our sine and our cos, our sine cosine tangent might be a little easier. Tangent's going to be way easy. So our sine of theta is going to be 
from our perspective of theta, we're going to go opposite over hypotenuse, so 1 over square root of 5, and immediately I will do cosecant because cosecant of theta is going to be the reciprocal of this, square root of 5 over 1. But we're not done with sine because we need to rationalize the denominator. So this is square root of 5 over 5. Here's your answer for sine. Cosine is going to be the adjacent over hypotenuse, or 2 over square root of 5. Immediately I will do the secant of theta. Square root of 5 over 2. Multiply top and bottom by a square root of 5 over square root of 5. And this gives me an answer of 2 square root of 5 over 5. Okie dokie, tangent time, the best one on this page. Because tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. Cotangent is going to be adjacent over opposite. Just two. All right, you made it, folks. If you've watched this whole video by now, you've spent over a half hour with me. I appreciate the time and dedication on just the front page. So here we go with problem number 18. Hmm, looking at from that theta right there. Now, we do know the hypotenuse and the legs, so we're going to use the c squared minus b squared equals a squared equivalent expression to the Pythagorean theorem to find my missing leg. So this is going to be the square root of 5 quantity squared minus 2 squared equals a squared. So this makes 5 minus 4 equals a squared, 1 equals a squared, a is equal to 1 because the square root of 1 is 1. So, ba bam, we now have sine of theta. Sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so 1 over square root of 5. I immediately am going to do my cosecant because that, would, that reciprocal function is going to be square root of 5 over 1. Now we need to multiply top and bottom by square root of 5 over square root of 5 to get our rational out of the denominator. There you go. Cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is going to be 2 over square roots of 5, and I'm immediately, immediately going to do my secant. Now, if you've been kind of keeping along on paper, um, do you notice that problem 17 and 18 have a lot of similarities to what we did in, in the previous, you know, like... 18 and 17 are exactly the same. Yeah, because I'm looking at the same kind of triangle in a different perspective. And notice that this is a 2, 1 square root of 5. And the other triangle is a 1, 2 square root of 5. Oh my gosh, they're the same triangles. So you're seeing me do the work out twice um, for the same exact answer set. With the difference being is that this is from a different theta. It's a different perspective of theta. So yes, it does. It is. It is a little busy work here because you'll notice that this is, you know, the there's a pattern between this and this. But this is from a different perspective of theta. So the perspective of theta is incredibly important, especially as we get to the problems um, next to this here. But I really do appreciate watching this if you stuck through all of it or scanned and panned through the problems that you needed to understand. All right, thank you for watching the first part of this video.